Hello, hello. <laughs> So, as always, I'll begin by lighting a candle and casting sacred space. Got our candle here. I'm just gonna burn some of this cedar and just clear this space and bless it. Clearing my chakra system. Just letting my thoughts soften so that I can speak to you all from my heart center for our heart chakra discussion today. Just a quick review of what we've gone over so far for those of you who may or may not have been with me already. So the chakra system is an energetic system in the body. We have there are arguably hundreds of chakras in the body, um, but today we're gonna just kind of move through the more traditional, uh, more well-known, the seven chakras that we see that um, are the spectrum of the rainbow. So from red, orange, yellow, and now we're at green in the heart space. Um, and this energy system is so vital to our spiritual experience here on earth it is a communication system, not only within ourselves, but with our environment. And we need the chakras to be balanced and aligned so that we can live our lives from this space of alignment. So I think we can all agree at this point that, there, that we have a physical body, we have our emotional self, um, we have our spiritual self, we also have this energetic self, which is a layer um, it's really the vital part of ourselves. So when we talk about prana and breath, um, this is what we're talking about in our yoga practice. Um, this energy system in the body. So, we'll go ahead and just move into the heart chakra. Okay, so the heart chakra, the Sanskrit word for this chakra is anahata. Anahata. A-N-A-H-A-T-A. -A -A. And the anahata chakra is green and it's located right here in our heart space. The element of this chakra is air. I like to think that that is because love is ever expanding. It is everything, it's, it's everywhere. And the developmental stage of this chakra is from about four to seven years old. So this is where we really start. So in our core chakra, it's developing between the ages of about 18 months to four years old. So when we're learning how to advocate for ourselves and what we need. And the heart chakra is this shift into being able to not only advocate for ourselves, but also advocate for others. So our awareness really begins to expand like air and really take on what's going on around us. Okay, this is where we really start caring for others. We develop friendships. If you look back on your life, probably your first best friend was somewhere between the ages of four and seven. So this is where we really start to experience compassion and friendship and love. The anatomical connection to this chakra, of course, is our heart, which includes our circulatory system. So our veins, our arteries, also our lungs, our shoulders and arms, 
So our arms are directly connected to our heart, our diaphragm, and the thymus gland. Okay. So again, I like to connect the chakra with the anatomy of our body because that is one map. So if you're experiencing an imbalance in any of these parts of your body, that could be a sign that um, the heart chakra is imbalanced. So before we move into the intuitive message of this chakra, let's do a breath-centered practice so that we can really drop in and feel and experience from the heart space. Okay, so sit up nice and tall. You can close your eyes and just let your hands rest. And we'll take a deep breath in through the nose. And a big exhale. And then seal the lips. Breathe in and out through your nose, activating ujjayi pranayama. This breath soothes the nervous system. It activates our chakras and our vital energy body. As you breathe, just feel and observe as you drop in more deeply into your body and into this space. And then bring your awareness to your heart space. And imagine that here in the center of your chest, there is a green lotus flower blossoming open right at the heart. And as you breathe, this lotus flower begins to glow a beautiful color of green a beautiful green light. It feels warm in your chest. It feels alive. Breathe into this heart space, feeling this energy come alive in the center of your being. Then reach your hands over your head so the palms touch and then draw your hands down into your heart space for Anjali Mudra. And just feel your thumbs pressing into the heart. And from this space we'll sing the sound of Om, the sound that reminds us that we are all connected, that we are all one. Inhale. Om. Rub your hands together, creating warmth and energy between the palms. And then press one hand and then the other into your heart space. Just feeling this buzzing energy, this life, this love. Feel the chest illuminate with this beautiful green light. And then slowly begin to draw your hands away from the chest, pulling this light outward in every direction. This light and this love begins to expand out past your body. Feel this connection as you reach the arms wide, feeling your light and your energy expand. As far as your arms can reach, this is your energy field. Fill this space with love and compassion toward yourself, your body, your mind and your thoughts. And then be begin to expand this love past your energy field out into the world, out into the hearts of every human on this planet, out into the hearts of every animal on this planet. 
extend this love out across the oceans and the mountains, the deserts and the great plains. Extend this love out to all of our plants and ecosystems, all that sustains us. Extend this love and this compassion out into the world. Feel this space and this love. And begin to pull all of this energy and this love back toward the heart space. Laying one hand on the chest and then the other. Honoring this infinite space of love that dwells within. We are powerful beings. And our power is love. Take a deep breath here in this space. Just feeling this love within you. And let your eyes gently flutter open. Welcome friends, welcome to sacred space. I want to begin with a mantra today. This mantra is Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may I in some way contribute to that happiness and that freedom. Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. This is our message today. The message of the heart chakra is compassion. Compassion not only for ourselves, but for everyone, for everything. So we talked about this in our other chakras, but the biggest lesson that we are learning right now in our human existence is that we have to think about more than just ourselves. We truly have to understand that we are not alone on this planet, that we are all here together. We are all sharing this planet in this space together. So compassion not only asks us to look within and to treat ourselves with love, but it also asks us to think big, to think about the collective. This is a word I use a lot, collective. I like this word because it really describes this concept of we are all one, we are all a collective, we are collected here on this planet. We are all interacting with each other every day. And the energy that we're putting out into our planet is affecting everyone. So the first concept I want to touch on here is from the eight limbs of yoga. This may be my favorite topic within the yoga, the yogic philosophy. In the first limb of yoga, we have the yamas and the niyamas, which I talked about before in our root chakra when creating a foundation of who we are and what we believe in, right? So also in our, our core chakra, I referred to the eight limbs of yoga. Um, these are similar to uh, the 10 commandments or, you know, 12 steps of recovery, whatever. It's a, it's a program or a format to give us a foundation. Okay, so in the first concept that is introduced in the yogic philosophy is ahimsa which is nonviolence or compassion. So what is ahimsa? What does it look like? Well, it starts with ourselves. It starts with ourselves. So 
we have to look into our lives and see where are we practicing violence toward ourselves? Where am I lacking compassion? So this is where we get into compassionate listening. Compassionate listening is really paying attention to the way that we speak to ourselves. Really listening to the inner dialogue, right, or the ego, the storyteller in our mind that's telling us what we're experiencing. We have to really start paying attention to that narrative or that narrator. Are we hard on ourselves when we make mistakes? How do we face challenges? How do we navigate them? Because we have to start from this space of awareness first before we can really begin to practice the same awareness with other people. However, the, both of these concepts support each other. The more awareness I create around how I'm speaking to myself automatically gives me more awareness on how I talk to other people and vice versa. When I practice compassion with others, I'm naturally practicing compassion with myself. So really either way is, is really great and helpful. And so on my yoga mat for me, this was where my yoga practice was really the first place that I became aware of my inner narrative. Right, so I would go to a yoga class and of course I would be challenged, especially in the beginning when I was trying yoga postures for the first time or breath work exercises or whatever it was. Um, and there would be moments where maybe I felt a little defeated or something was new and you know unfamiliar. And I was blessed to have a few amazing yoga teachers that really spoke to that experience and would say during class, like, where is your mind right now? What are you experiencing in this posture? How do you speak to yourself when you're challenged. And I became aware that the way I was speaking to myself was not very supportive and I would definitely not talk this way to anyone in my life that I loved. So our yoga practice is a really great place to start this relationship of compassion in ahimsa and really seeing and under and understanding how we speak to ourselves. So now let's add another layer of ahimsa. Our actions. What are we doing? What actions are we taking in our life that may be harming others? So my favorite example it always comes back to food with me. <laughs> But my favorite example is the food that we are eating. What are we putting into our bodies? Is it nourishing? Are we eating food as an act of compassion? Are we eating foods that treat our bodies kindly? Right, so are we eating natural fruits and vegetables and grains and foods that we know support us. And how are we eating? How are we eating? Are we taking our time and really letting our meals be intentional? Right, the sacred space of eating food. And where is our food coming from? Who is preparing your food? Who's touching your food? Because every single step of the food preparation process has energy. So this is where we get into this idea of prana when it comes to our food. This is a really great kind of tool is to consider how much prana or life is in your food. How much time and how much 
energy is put between you putting food on your plate and that food coming from the ground or the earth. Who had to suffer before I consumed this food? So this is why a lot of yogis practice vegetarianism because we don't want to eat death. We don't want to eat suffering. I don't want that in my body. I don't want to support systems of violence. I do not consent to that, right? So we go back to our conversation when we're reclaiming our spiritual sovereignty of what we are consenting to in our lives, in our world. Are we consenting to violence? And our heart chakra is a space where we consider others, we consider animals and people, even outside of our circle and our community and what we can really see. So compassion really allows us to think bigger and bigger and bigger. And we really start to see how we are connected to everything. I am, I am connected to the animals by caring for them and by not contributing to their suffering. Right, so I have had, you know, one moment I had in my life that's just standing out to me right now when it comes to animals is, you know, my husband and I lived somewhere where we were around cows that we knew were going to slaughter. And we would pray for them we would talk to them, we would sing to them, we would remind them that we loved them. And I felt this connection back from these animals. They felt so familiar and so calming, right? And so just a reminder, like when I extend that compassion, I remember that we are all connected, we are all one. So how else can we practice compassion toward our bodies? Am I taking care of myself? Am I sleeping regularly? Am I eating three meals a day? What am I putting on my body? What products am I using? What chemicals am I exposing my body to? I, in our home, we read every ingredient label. Even when I go to a doctor's office, I read the ingredient label of anything they're going to put on me or in me, right? We want to know what we are putting in and on our bodies. And then we have self-forgiveness as another really great practice of compassion toward ourselves. Where can I forgive myself? Where am I being hard on myself for not meeting an expectation or whether I place an expectation on myself or maybe someone else did? Or maybe the, the system of interference that we talked about, right? Society, what expectations are being put on me and am I meeting them and during that process, how am I speaking to myself? Right, there's been some really beautiful conversations on social media around the idea that we don't have to be starting a business right now. We don't have to be, you know, working really hard or necessarily doing anything specific. We are all processing and adjusting maybe reconsidering where we want to go from here. So just remember that there is no rush. Be gentle with yourself. Extend compassion toward yourself because you are suffering as well. 
so let's bring this idea of compassion let's expand it a little bit beyond ourselves we we have a pretty good idea of all right i'm back so we have a good idea of what compassion toward ourselves looks like so let's begin to extend this compassion a little wider into the collective into our planet so of course, caring for our animals is so important. We have so many beautiful animals here. I believe the animals were even here before we were. This planet is rightfully theirs. And we are here to share space with them. However, at some point, humans began, we decided that we are more important than animals and that we deserve space more than they do. And so this comes back to that conversation that we had on who is deciding this? Who decides that these lives matter less than these lives? Every life matters and that's compassion. And compassion asks us to not only care for other people and to care and love our animals, but compassion asks us to care specifically about people and animals and plants and so on. It asks us to specifically care about others who are suffering who are being treated unfairly or unjustly. Compassion is an action. It's protecting, it's advocating, it's understanding and listening. Caring for and loving for. So, compassion for our animals and doing what we can to protect them and to seize their suffering. Also compassion for our earth and protecting our earth. And of course, loving everyone here. Loving everyone, even the people who make us mad even our enemies. Somehow, extending compassion toward the people that we blame and who are wrong. So this is Ahimsa, this is compassion. So what does compassion and action look like when it comes to other people? Because that's where I really want to go with this because, you know, we really need compassion right now. Our human race more than ever, it's just, it's the biggest piece that's missing. And I think that the reason why it's so hard to be compassionate is because in order to be compassionate, we have to admit that someone or something is suffering. And it may be hard to face the truth of suffering humans or suffering animals or our suffering ecosystems or our suffering planet. It may be really hard to admit that these things are happening probably because we know that we are contributing to these systems of suffering. And we're contributing to them because we have been taught by this system of interference. We have been taught to participate and to not question 
these systems of violence. Which means that we have to admit that we have been lied to our entire lives, that we are wrong, that we have caused harm. We have to be able to admit and accept these things in order to really extend compassion towards these things which are suffering. So how do we do this? How do we help people want to be more compassionate? How do we help them? Because I know and I believe that it the deepest center of every human being, we are compassionate. We don't want to cause suffering to others. So this is where communication and sharing and understanding each other really comes in. We have to practice nonviolent communication. We have to learn how to educate and share this information with the people that we love or the people that we want to reach out to. We have to really carefully navigate how to expose these systems of violence and create compassion around these suffering beings while also extending compassion to the perpetrator. All right, so like really being mindful with the way that we communicate around suffering. So I f feel like most times it's really un unavoidable to experience anger, especially when maybe you're learning about the truth of our planet maybe for the first time like I remember my first women's studies class my, the first time I learned about systems of violence against women specifically I was very angry and it took time for me to really be able to extend compassion to people and systems that had hurt me it took time, it took understanding, it took learning. So the best thing that we can do is to share information with other people in a compassionate way, to not overwhelm people, right? to not be angry and blame and point fingers and attack others, right? So. This is a concept we've seen many times. Some of our greatest peacekeepers on our earth have practiced nonviolence as a way of creating change. We have power. And I believe that people want to care and want to help. So we have to create ways, we have to use our creativity, our sacral space to create ways for all of us to practice compassion together. I learned something very cool recently. There was a study in Washington DC many years ago, I can't remember exactly which years they were, but they had about a large amount of people, about 40,000 people in Washington, D.C. were meditating at the same time every day for two months. They were meditating in temples, at home, in public, all these different places. They had all these people participating. And they wanted to see if the crime rate in Washington, D.C. would decrease if we were all meditating. Because like I talked about before, when our energy field and when we're meditating, you know, these thoughts and this sense of peace is pouring out into the collective, 
right? We're all affecting each other, right? We're all, it's like little switches just turn on. There's a, a ripple effect across the world. And, and what they found is that the crime rate did decrease dramatically during these two months where people were meditating and consciously sending love out into their community. And when they stopped meditating, the crime rates increased again. So I found this very interesting and it's just a perfect example of how we are all contributing to the collective every day. And so if we are practicing compassion toward ourselves, towards other people, then we're inevitably pouring that compassion into the world and we're helping others. We're helping others into that space. We're guiding them into that space on an energetic subconscious level that takes little to no action. Such a small step with such a big impact. So if you're feeling overwhelmed of where to begin, start there. Start with sitting in a seat of mindfulness and extending your intention out into the world. Other ways that we can practice compassion right now is of course holding space for others, especially those that we know are suffering. So it may not always sound like the most fun thing to pick up the phone for someone that you know wants to talk, maybe for a long time, <laughs> right? But allowing other people to feel heard and creating space for them is compassion. Sharing is compassion. Sharing our knowledge, sharing our resources, right? There's a lot of people who are experiencing scarcity on our planet in different ways right now. There's homelessness. There's people who have lost their income. There have been people starving without food on our planet. There have been people without clean water on our planet. Even here in the United States, Flint, Michigan, there are places and people, our friends and our family and our neighbors who don't have the resources that we may have. So can we share ours? Can we share our money by investing it into other people's ideas or other people's businesses, other people's creative projects? Or can we donate to a charity or a GoFundMe page? Can we share supplies that we may have? Like I saw something cool happening where um, people are finding the little mini libraries, you know, that you see around in a city. They look like little mailboxes and they have books in there. I've seen people putting toilet paper and toothbrushes and canned goods, you know, just trying to share what they have with other people who might not have the same things. Sharing our experiences. Hey, I, I'm scared too. Hey, I feel uncertain too. I'm in this with you. We're all in this together. Having those converse, conversations extends so much compassion into our world. And what I really want to kind of wrap up with today is Compassion comes with a deep understanding that we are all healing and we are all growing at our own rate. That spirit is working in everyone's life in different ways. We're all here for different reasons, for different experiences. 
And so really be mindful of your judgment toward others and their choices. And instead of considering how this person may be wrong, consider how this person may have suffered, what they must have experienced to allow themselves to disassociate or deny systems of suffering or to not understand, right? having compassion that we've all experienced pain and suffering. And we don't know other people's stories. We don't know what they've been through that caused them to make the choices that they make. And so when you're feeling anger towards someone or something, it's okay to feel that anger, but with it, remember compassion and to, that the most powerful thing you can do is to love, is to love that person. We don't want to force anything on anyone because we ourselves are are trying to free ourselves from systems of slavery, manipulation, and forced thought. So we don't want to participate in that system by forcing our ideas onto others. Love and kindness. Treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself love everyone even our enemies love everyone and and find ways that you can contribute that you can extend love and compassion into the world get creative We are all connected. We are all to blame. We are all the problem, but we are all the solution. We can do this together. So how are you practicing compassion? Look into your life and revisit everything one step at a time and ask am I participating in a system of fear and violence or am I participating in love and it's through our own individual our own awareness that we will change the world that we will Continue to help it move in the direction that we want, that we know is possible. So I'll finish today again as I began with our mantra of compassion. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may I in some way contribute to that happiness and that freedom. It is an honor to share sacred space with you all today. Thank you for tuning in. This video will be available for 24 hours, so feel free to revisit it and share it with your friends and anyone you think may be interested. I'll also have it up on my YouTube channel soon. And I'll be back here again tomorrow um, at 12 p.m. again. Today was a little bit earlier, um, but tomorrow will be 12 p.m. and we'll be talking about the throat chakra. And we'll be talking about how all of our choices impact the collective like we did today. And what we can do to really be a valuable part of this collective. What can we do to have the most impact? Okay, so I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Namaste.